And then we will be all set. Okay. We're alive? Almost. Did we do the screen up here yet? There we go. It says record. All right, we think we have it. Okay. All right. Perfect. Hello, welcome everyone to the Thursday, August 26, 2021 meeting of the Edina Arts and Culture Commission. We are meeting in person at Edina City Hall. The following participants are joining us remotely via WebEx. We have Commissioner Susan, we have Susan Johnson, we have Laura Westland, we have Susan Chandler. She joining us um, by phone or yeah. Yeah, plan to, we'll keep an eye on it yeah. in the queue. Okay, great. And I know Commissioner Fram um, will probably not be joining us because of family emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, city staff right now, um, we have everyone present uh, with us in the community room. To participate in community comment, residents must attend our person in-person meeting. Uh, we have someone here today. Residents also have the option of submitting a commission correspondence form online at edinamn.gov. Welcome to those watching this meeting in person and remotely. I will call the August 26, 2021 meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission to order at the time, please. 4.35. 4.35 p.m. Uh, terrific. And can we have uh, Director Perry Vetter please initiate the roll call? Commissioner Inlaw. Here. Commissioner Chandler. Commissioner Fram. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Rubin. Here. Commissioner Shen. Commissioner Sorensen. Here. Commissioner Stemler. Here. Commissioner Suko. Commissioner Westland. Here. Roll's been taken. And Here. Susan Chandler is in. She just is trying the phone number and needs the access code for that. Okay. 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 Terrific. Um, thank you so much, Gary. Um, everyone should have received a meeting agenda on the city website. Can I get a motion to approve the meeting agenda, please? So moved. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Rubin. And can I get that seconded, please? Seconded. Seconded. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sorry. I missed that. I've got a okay. motion by Commissioner Rubin. Commissioner Amla. Seconded. seconded. Commissioner Amla. Uh, Commissioner Amla. Yes. Thank you so much. Chambers. On the web. Uh, uh, Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Rubin. Aye. Commissioner Sorensen? Aye. Commissioner Stemler? Aye. And Commissioner Wessel? Aye. Terrific. The July 22nd meeting minutes were posted to the uh, City of Edina website. Um, hope everyone had a chance to read the minutes. Wondering if there are any questions or changes to the minutes. You um, look those over. Anyone has any questions or changes? I'm uh, hearing none. Can I get a motion? Think, oh, yes. Uh, Laura had a an and for an if or something, but okay. have, I have that recorded and I will make that change. Okay, terrific. It's great to have an editor with us. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. <laughs> hearing none, okay, except for those small changes. Uh, can I get a motion, please, to approve the July 22nd minutes? So moved. Commissioner okay. Rubin, can I get a second, please? A, a second. second. Okay, uh, Commissioner Westland. Okay. Um, yeah, like... Motion by Ruben, second by Westland. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Emma. Oh, hi. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Hi. Commissioner Ruben. Hi. Commissioner Sorensen. Hi. Commissioner Stemler. Hi. Commissioner Westland. Hi. Motion carries. Perfect. Uh, now we're on item number five on our agenda, uh, community comments. So uh, this is where we invite residents to share relevant issues or concerns. Um, we must limit comments to under three to five minutes. Um, and we will, um, it's like we have with us Megan Feeney, who is an Adina resident, um, and she will uh, talk to us. And then after we're allowed to ask questions, 
Uh, we need to refrain from a, a meaty discussion at this point because it's not on our agenda. Um, but thank you so much for being with us, Megan. Um, looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Great. Um, thank you, Commissioner. I don't know if I have to say I'm a Morningside resident. Um, I did have to say that in the city council meeting this morning. So um, thank you so much to Rebecca, who's been a tremendous cheerleader to this whole thing and for inviting me here today to talk to you. And thank you for listening. Um, just a little background on me. Feel free to ask any questions. I come at this from an academic background. I'm a film professor and film critic. I taught film at the University of Minnesota um, and St. Old in the past, um, but now I'm focused on writing film criticism. Um, but like many residents in Edina, I started seeing the rumors in the spring that the Edina Cinema was going to stay permanently closed. Obviously, we all thought that it had been shuttered because of COVID, and that made all the sense in the world. Um, but uh, started looking into it and um, digging in and this spring reached out to uh, the city and Bill Neuendorf was very attentive and, and helpful and he put me in touch with the cinema owner, uh, Susan Howland. Um, fast forward to, and, and there was a lot of talk at that time, like, well, she has interested parts uh, and she's very interested in keeping it a cinema, which was just great news to me, right? She's, these rumors about it's gonna be a condo, <laughs> um, or they thought uh, whatnot are, are not true. She wants to keep the cinema. Mm. Um, so fast forward to July, I, I just was like, all right, I, I want to make sure this happened. And so I pitched to Susan or Susie, the owner, and then Bill here, the idea of it being operated as a nonprofit. Because I believe that a for-profit operator, which are the other two offers on the table right now, or I don't know if it's the form of an offer, but interest, uh, are these for-profit exhibitors. And I don't know if you guys are following Holly, but you probably watch a lot of movies at home, right? Or stream content at home. And of course, that's a habit that we all have because of COVID or exacerbated by mm -hmm. COVID. But this is a problem for the exhibition industry before mm. COVID, and it's going to be a problem even more so after COVID because the studios are building in um, at home right. habits. They don't care. They are going to produce content and they don't care how people consume it. And mostly they have, have left the theaters in the lurch. Um, some of the bigger district uh, theaters can stay, are barely surviving like AMC because they can sign, because they have leverage, they can sign deals with um, the production companies to get some of the video on demand money. In any case, all the industry prognosticators are very um, pessimistic mm -hmm. to apoplectic, like it's, it's bad. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, oh, sorry, that's my- Two, yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, they, they can wait out. They can come in. They can come in if they want. Yeah. We don't bite. Oh, the pressure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> But this brings me to the solution that's very um, positive news is that nonprofit organizations have been saving shuttered theaters around the country for years now. And um, I'm happy to share with you guys if you want it at some point, um, these examples. And they're super exciting, inspiring, and they range from really, really impressive and ambitious. There's examples in suburbs of Boston, suburbs of New York City, and et cetera. Um, um, to, to less ambitious examples, just like keeping keeping the doors open. And the advantage to the nonprofit model is that they can get up to 60% of their revenue from contributions. So donors, sponsorships, grants, um, memberships, um, and then they can offset some of the staffing costs too through volunteers. And this just like gets the whole community involved in the cinema too. So it has that advantage too, which I think is gonna be necessary to save these cinemas because people can get the content at home. And I, even myself, like I love the cinema. I love big screen, I love big audio, but I, I get lazy, I get isolated. Um, and so I think it's gonna, this value proposition of community that the nonprofit brings in, I think is super important. So that's why I, I was thinking, <laughs> In July, that I was going to have to start my own nonprofit, and I was kind of excited but also overwhelmed. Um, but all along, I've been talking to the Minneapolis Film Society, who had said from the beginning in the spring that they'd be interested in subleasing, if I could get this off the ground, one of the three 
But talking back to the executive director in July, we shot again, and she was like, we're actually interested in the whole thing. Mm. So I think this is a tremendous opportunity for Edina. And um, this morning at the city council meeting of the Housing and Redevelopment Authority, I was you know, saying, we need to roll out the red carpet to make this happen. This is um, mm -hmm. Minnesota's premier film organization. Mm -hmm. They attract 85,000 patrons a year at their location at St. Anthony, Maine. Um, 50, and, and that's only with one screen annually, and then five, all five of those screens during the film festival in April, which attracts 50,000 of those. Uh, but here at Vienna is four screens. Hi, I'm sorry, Susan is muted right now, so I'm not able to hear what's happening in the room. Unmute. There you go. Okay, sorry. that's good. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, Laura. Sorry. <laughs> um, so let's see, what else to say about that? I mean, all this diverse audiences that they bring in and this community engaged programming. Um, if you're not familiar with them, I'm happy to forward their website, but they do, aside from the festival every spring, that's very, very popular and well established. They have these like many national, many festivals of national cinema. So there's an Iranian one, a Czech, a French, a Cuban, um, there's a Cine Latino festival. And they also do some work actually in North Minneapolis. They help, uh, they bring in programming to a micro cinema in North Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Um, they have also programming around different issues like anti racism and they tell me that they're going to launch a climate change. Series, which would actually, I know, appeal very much to donors and, and I know that's like a top issue for uh, people. So. What would need to happen for the Minneapolis Film Society to come here? Because this would increase their operational expenses by quite a bit because the rent that Susie is asking is very high and she wants a triple net lease, which is cam charges and taxes. And, oh my, triple. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so she doesn't want to sell the building. You know, I don't know at what point she might, but in any case, let's just say she doesn't want to sell the building. And um, so in any case, if you can buy the building, then everything is uh, tax free. Um, so there would be a need for city funding to even get them to be able to continue the talks. And um, Susie hasn't had a, a tenant there for mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The landlord just stopped paying and took off with the projectors. So even to get the- That was my off, question. Yep, the, the projectors are gone. And so like it's half a million dollars just to get four projectors and the audio system back up. Um, so in any case, I went to the council this morning and um, just tried to pitch them her bill's <clears throat> suggestion on this nonprofit model as being the preferable one and the one in which you guys would have the most, you know, or the community at large would have the most influence and ability to let this thing be the civic asset that it wants to be. Like, if we could maximize the potential of that thing at 50 the France, it would be grand. And the city council members who are present, Carol Jackson and Ron Anderson, and the mayor who have talked to also individually really do get that back they're, they're they very much understand the community interest um and particularly in my letter to them i think i mentioned your chapter of the comprehensive plan of 2018 sure. comprehensive plan because i think this is the golden opportunity to make good on the values expressed in it so at this point things are very much in flux mm -hmm. um, and it's unclear what the role of the Arts and Culture Commission would be, but um, even your support at this point for getting that Minneapolis Film Society here, or even if another group comes in, you know, advocating for a role of the city, if the city is going to give money uh, into that really exciting community programming piece. Well, okay, do we have any questions for Nick? Yes, sure. Yeah, 
So just, uh, just to clarify, you know, yeah. like community comment normally we don't have a in depth discussion. And like, okay. I would say if you want to ask any clarifying questions of Megan, yeah, time, that's yeah, um, and not get into a technical right, right. discussion or anything. Like right. That. Is there any full time or part time staff with the Film Society? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I could I, I I could ballpark it. Let's say ten to a dozen. Mm. Yeah, they're a big organization. Oh, wow. Yeah, they've been around uh, for. Uh, 62 years. Wait, okay. No, sorry, founded in 1962. Um, but the current executive director of Susan Swahowski has really, in the past 10 years, really professionalized it and grown it in size and stature. One, one more question. Yeah. I mean, the building is sort of decrepit. Do we know how much it would take to bring it back to speed? I mean, that depends on how ambitious we want it to be. Some of these centers are just absolutely gorgeous, right? Mm -hmm. um, but even to just get it up to speed, like I said, there's a half a million dollars in just in the just in the yeah, yeah, with, the let alone right. like do you do you upgrade the seats? Right. No, that's the, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean great. Just that needs to be part of consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's my question. Any other questions at this point? Um, I guess I would ask uh, are there any other uh, opportunities for like either grants or state uh, funding that would be associated with this? Yeah, I mean, the Minneapolis Film Society already knows all the places to get those grants and, and, and how to secure those grants. Um, if we weren't the Minneapolis Film Society and it were, I would have to start a nonprofit, that'd be, a, you know, a very, a, you know, mm -hmm. but yes, there's the Minnesota State Arts Board. Mm -hmm. um, there's a comparable Operation in Duluth, they, a nonprofit arts organization runs a cinema, but the cinema is just one part of, mm -hmm. of it. Um, so, yes. Okay. Okay. Gary, what, what can we do or not do in regard to this? Uh, I was going to ask if Susan if, or Laura. Oh, yeah, any Laura, any, Laura or Susan, any questions for Megan at this point? No, I, again, I'm, I think I'm just curious the appropriate ways for the for our commission to be involved in this i'm i'm still trying to figure those kinds of things out um i think it's a really fabulous opportunity to keep the cinema there um and so i'm just wondering what what roles can we play to be involved with it yeah can i answer that sure well i think right now it's unclear because we don't know what path what option, what door Susan Hoglet is gonna choose, right? So I, I think that's just um, uncertain. Oh, sorry, and just for clarity on that, what do you mean what door, whether- so you see that she's gonna choose one of the two other for-profit oh, exhibitors who okay. have shown interest to have proposals in front of her. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. And I can, can I ask, are the, are the for profit options, are they also for a cinema or would they be using the building for something cinema. else? A cinema. Okay. Okay. It, other people have looked at it and I probably should not name names um, for multi purpose, like turn it into a music venue. Okay. And it just does not lend itself to that as a fourplex. And mm. it's just not. It, that would entail a lot of renovation and basically you wouldn't have a cinema anymore. So yeah. Yes, for well, just because it's community comment, we don't want to go into the discussion. I'll just right. add that um, Megan is correct. The city council acting as the HRA, the Housing and Redevelopment Authority. The, the HRA meetings are on Thursday morning. So that's why you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't a oh okay. It wasn't an act of city council meetings, yeah. but the city council wears the HRA hat. Right. right? Yeah. Um, so at the HRA meeting Sorry. this morning, this was on their agenda. Uh, so the city council is actually engaged in it as the HRA. Right. And um, uh, that is correct. There's a private property owner that is entertaining options for how to move forward. Okay. And she has engaged the city in what is that best path, path? What is community commitment, et cetera, things like that. So. I would encourage you if you wanted to look for more, you can look at this morning's HRA packet. Mm, okay. um, it is there's a lengthy staff report by mm, Bill mm, Newenbor in that packet about what some of those options are, 
path forward considerations that the council will look at. So, cool. uh, okay. So I would sum it as tonight is more of an FYI. Right. Yeah. Oh, sure. and, um, yeah. That's great. Uh, Thank you. That yeah, this is great. occurring, uh, but you can also look at the HRI packet as much more information. Thank you today. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank you. 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 E-E-N-E-Y. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It was lovely to meet you all. Thank you. 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 Yeah, isn't she? Wonderful that she was with us today. Um, and a reminder that, yes, this is a great part of our in-person meetings to have people come yeah. visit us and, and present like this. So that was great. Um, we're moving on to agenda item six. Uh, we'll go on to reports and recommendations. 6A is our 2021 work plan and updates. Everyone should have received the 2021 work plan with some updates. Um, I think what we, we want to kind of cruise through this because I know we've got a big discussion ahead of us for 2022 um, plans and ideas to, to hash out. But um, for 2021, I wonder if we can just kind of go through, I know initiative one, we've got um, Brian with us. We can sort of talk about um, some items that are at play right now. Um, I know one of the things to top of mind is fall into the arts festival and getting ready for the booth. Um, so if you um, have any updates for us, Brian, and we can certainly um, mm -hmm. can talk with uh, Gary and Susan about that too. Sure, well, we got, we have uh, flyers now um that are printed for uh for to just be distributed to uh private you know to businesses and around town in places that allow for uh public hosting so uh please take a, a few if you want to I think I can't hear. I think Susan muted. Can you hear now? Okay, can you hear? Okay. So I we have um, flyers now promoting the virtual gallery, which uh, you know uh, commissioners can uh, pick up and distribute if you'd like. So uh, I will leave some at the lobby desk if anybody would like to come to get them. Pick some up. So we just have. You say distribute. You mean like put on a commute or yeah. like a, a coffee shop or something. Yeah. Else. So this is basically to to uh, go to businesses around town to post. Do you um, do you have electronic versions of this too? I do not, but we could check. I could. Uh, that, that would check would be easier. For mm -hmm. some of us. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we just. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we were, you know, really focusing on was that that we really had no. No, nothing, uh, no tangible signage to uh, to no. be putting out. So this was the yeah. uh, the first of what we right. have. Uh, I think that we're probably not going to uh, probably put too much effort more into you know uh, publishing more at this time. Uh, I think we're the next goal is to get some signage prepared for the uh, Hall and Arts Festival, but. Uh, this uh, this is kind of what we have for now. Brian, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> we just tried our scanning, and I'm out of juice, and Terry couldn't connect. This takes us right to the the site on the Better Together website. The QR. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's nice. And so, and then. Uh, Fall into the Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. Right. So then we're also preparing for the Fall into Arts Festival. Uh, right now, uh, I'm working on just uh, figuring out the logistics around putting a digital display in the booth and how to run that. Um, so, do you want to talk about that period now, or do we do that later? I, I would love to talk about. So just when okay. people look back at the record, we're always talking about the gallery stuff as part of the video. Yeah. So yeah, right. yeah. I think talking about the booth and what your needs are, and if you want to talk about staffing and schedule. Okay. Let's. Well, I think that uh, you know one of the goals with this initiative is to then figure out how to take this from the virtual realm to the uh, physical realm, and I think um, 
this first step is to have a, a digital display at the booth where people who are walking through can can see some of this and if they want to stop and and uh, watch as it's cycling through uh, they can so I think it's probably not the most ideal way for people to experience this art but I think uh, it's a great way to kind of get people aware of it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we'll have like, you know, a QR code there where people sure. can be like, oh, I'm going to scan it and take it with them. So I think that'd be kind of a neat way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so logistically, I don't think it'll be incredibly complicated. Like, I have the technical expertise that I could probably do this manually in terms of, you know, switching between uh, physical or like, you know, a static piece and then transition into a performance piece that where's a video that has to be played. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't know if the city has some of the technology already in in house that could be helpful. From a hardware standpoint, you can <laughs> like a nice size monitor, mm -hmm. those over. Uh, yeah. I mean I was thinking that it could be, you know, uh, a monitor that could be um, Probably horizontal might be a, a better way to present it. Uh, I don't know if some of them come with a stand or, yeah, or it can be rotated. Mm -hmm. uh, and then usually it's it's a laptop or a tablet that kind of runs the program. Uh, but uh, I've even seen that you know there there's some companies where it's just like a kind of like a dongle that yeah. just plugs into the the TV. So whether or not there's, you guys have existing hardware and software that could run this, or if it would be just putting into like a PowerPoint and running it that way. <clears throat> Does the booth have electricity? Yeah, we, we talked about, Brian and I talked about that earlier. So the booth will be situated in front of his pavilion. So we can just run electric right, right out of that. Oh, yeah. that great. And how big will the booth be? 10 by 10, and it's shared and with that's, that's uh, enough for another commission. Yeah. That. Oh, we'll have we a could... 5 by 10. Who's the other commission? The Energy Commission doing the zero waste. Oh, terrific awareness. Okay. So you have 5 by 10 then. Yeah, I, mean, I think it could be a very small footprint. We could have it just kind of like right maybe on the corner of, of the booth, just there, and I could be hiding behind it, just, you know. Running it, I don't turning the crack. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't be the only one there for two days. Right? Like, right. No, no, right. Let's get volunteers here that yeah. can help you. But um, are you looking at doing some kind of signage at all, like or something similar to what Susie did on the car for the parade, yeah. or what kind of marketing requirements do we need for the booth? Well, I think uh, we had talked about like doing a sandwich board, but uh, I guess that was something we needed to get approval for. Uh, because and and also like Susan in terms of like how uh, how do other booths advertise stuff? How, you know, are, are we able to put stuff out in the in the walkway or not really? Okay. Um, so in a in a good year on a good weather day, uh, the two day festival we estimate attracts about twenty five thousand to thirty thousand people. Mm -hmm. There are places mm -hmm. where that gets pretty congested. And, you yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah, and especially if we have some kind of emergency gap with it and mm -hmm. emergency vehicles have to get through. So mm -hmm. I would I would suggest, I mean the, the artist booths are very simple. They have artist names, numbers, and so on. Um, but you could do a banner as a skirting around your tables and push the mm -hmm. tables up close. Okay. You know, something like that. You could probably do a banner because there's usually a Kind of a flap from the pole on the top. You could do a banner across the top as well. Uh, I, wonder, I think having some materials. Well, that's what I was going to say is that we could have a reprint. I've talked to a Dyna magazine, and if we get permission, they would love mm -hmm. to give us a reprint of the fabulous cover story on the virtual mm -hmm. gallery. Oh, that, that would be nice. great to pass out to people. Right. Um, we mm -hmm. also have Commissioner Johnson here, who's got some ideas percolating for a craft to make the booth a little more interactive for children, since mm -hmm. we have many families going through. So, I mean, I love Brian's idea of making this informational with the virtual gallery on display in an electronic capacity, but then also engaging the public with some activities that would bring some interest over to the booth. Um, and then, you know, obviously just having our, our, our commissioners there taking a shift 
to serve as an ambassador. It's one of the things we talked about in our duties document is having more of a presence at community events. So um, it'd be a great way to engage with the public, find out what the public would like the Arts and Culture Commission to be doing um, in the community. And, um, you know, I, I just think it's such a great opportunity for us. So one of the things we can talk about next is just uh, looking at, you know, setting out something where people can sign up for like a two hour shift sure. on the 11th or 12th. Mm -hmm. um, the hours are 10 to 5. 10 to 6 on Saturday, 10 to 5 on Sunday. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you'll be opposite the parkway from a couple of our sponsors, but also the we done a crime prevention fund and the police. So we will have uh, probably a police dog there for part of the time. The oh. motorcycle will be there. There's a oh. raffle on a giveaway, police pedal car. So it, it really is kind of a city and sponsor corner. Mm -hmm. So we really need something to draw people toward us because the dogs going to get a lot of people. Uh, they get a lot and of people. And the motorcycle. I don't think we're going to do it with a yeah, screen. But <laughs> can't have a dog. Can't have a dog. Okay. Yeah. But but, you know, we, we, we have to work, you know, we only have a couple of weeks here. So if we can work with even like, I thought the car just looked fabulous in the parade with the banner, something similar banner wise, since I know marketing is pretty coming up against, you know, holiday weekends and things like that. Yeah, I, know, I would say whatever we can determine the quickest that you need. Mm -hmm. um, we even had challenges getting Tootsie Rolls last time. So, oh, no. Um, <laughs> really? It's, Supply chains are yes. right right now. So if yeah. you're thinking about that, you want to bring stuff in. The sooner you know, the better. If you want to. Solve For example, it. Susie Johnson, maybe you could like quickly over the next couple of days just determine what what um, materials you would need for that simple craft. You, if you want to maybe share that that right now, the craft idea, the um, the, um, the wishing tree craft. Oh. Sure, I'd be happy to. I was thinking about it. Yeah, or a ribbon tree where you have the stretchy plastic strips and it kind of goes along with our, you know, our struggles to healing where the community can come and put a message down, a wish, a desire, a compliment, and we can tie them to a tree or a branch or whatever we decide so that we can have a colorful banner and kind of tie it into our, um, into our theme um, and get some community participation. That That's way. A great, you know what? I love that I did too because we could even take a picture of it and upload it to the virtual gallery at the end. See? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that I think that would be really fun and it's okay. really easy. Um, yep. So, and if they're plastic nice and, you know, yeah, I think it, it'll be fine. Um, the We do have the banners from the car, from the truck, okay. from the parade still. They're stored at the art center. So, if we can make use of those. And not oh, have yeah, to yeah. take yeah. a banner. Um, we could even trim them if we needed to, because you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but they're that would be good. Yeah, because oh. I mean, I think well, I do think that from my perspective, that the the booth should be representing the the Arts and Culture Commission, and that like the digital display will be the virtual gallery portion of it, mm -hmm. and that. But I don't, I don't, I think that uh, from what I understand, like the the, the booth should be representing the whole commission and maybe the better together uh, Dyna website as a whole. I mean, because to me, and, and this is, you guys can clarify, but um, better together seems to be, to me, feels like the home of the Arts and Culture Commission where we can kind of, where people will experience things that we are mm -hmm. engaged in. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess that is something that we could just can clarify over time is when we're as, after the virtual gallery is done, where where do we direct people to learn about who we are, you know, what we're doing? And like, is that, uh, I, I guess I was thinking that eventually maybe we could have a home, a home page for uh, our initiatives that we're doing or, or other things. Like, so that's once the virtual gallery is closed, I'm assuming that page will go away and maybe it could be taken over with something else. Right now, just for a point of clarity, I think you go to the government page under our commission and arts and culture, and you can find our landing page, which right. I think does need to be updated. Right. Um, but that right now is um, probably a very bare bones of who we are and what the yeah. right. plan and looks like, right. basic information. But I understand your point, and it is it has been really nice to have this better together 
uh, virtual gallery presence where you can really get a yeah. little deeper into what the commission is about. So well, right, and it's not going to kind of it's not confined by the constraints of city of laws and stuff. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. saying like. I mean, more of the creative home right. for the arts and culture. You but I don't it's think everybody by. knows that we have two separate things, you know, because like when I was trying to do my research on it, I went to the city. Right. You right. Know, but everyone is everything. still aware of the Better Together site. There's yeah, still... but I wasn't necessarily thinking that we were in there, you know, mm -hmm. with so, yeah. you know, maybe yeah. there's education that needs to be done because I certainly wasn't aware of that. Right. That's good. good point. So leading into that, I guess, because of the, the banner that was on the float, what do you what is the URL on that one? It takes you to the better it's together our, site, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Right to our QR code. Yeah. Correct? So yeah. it's not this one then. Yeah. And exactly. we actually, you know, our yeah. presence at the Fall into the Arts is actually we're warranted because of the virtual gallery. So okay. I think that if this being a virtual gallery arts and culture commission booth is is exactly what I think mm. they're looking for us to do. Um, and, okay. and so I think, um, you know, so if everything we're doing should be tied to the virtual gallery. Okay. Um, because so then, that's how we're able to have it still a part of the 2021 work plan. I see. Okay. Well, then perhaps it should. Maybe the, the, the thing that we do to draw people into it should have more to do with the virtual gallery then. Yeah. As opposed to some other activity. Uh, well, that's right. This wish tree is potentially an idea, just a simple thing that the, the sort of front and center, we realize that it, it isn't going mm -hmm. to be as exciting as seeing some of the artists in their booths, but right. but to understand there will be so many people that are interested in the arts at this event. Um, we may attract interest in submitting to the virtual gallery uh, by having a presence at this event. Right. That would be the hope. So um, having, you know, again, literature about the virtual gallery, having, you know, the, the, the digital gallery on display for people to interact yeah. with, for us to really show them how simple and easy it is to work with. Um, it's really a promotional tool for the virtual gallery. Right. Okay. And then to have, you know, this is sort of engaging the adults and, and children too. Children can certainly, with their parents' permission, um, engage in the virtual gallery. But then to have a, an activity or something just seems like part of the sideshow of what people do when they're displaying at Ball right. of the Arts. So that's not the main event. It's just kind of like, oh, let's see right. if we can put this over here and draw people over and then okay. teach them about the virtual gallery, which is, right. is I think, the, the, the main, um, you know, obviously what you are, are right. pushing to with the, the digital component. Well, I think then it, it, if that's the case, it would be good to uh, you know, and this is what I could work up on is some talking points yeah. that people yeah. who are volunteering at the booth will be able to That'd speak. Be great. To so we're all the, saying the, the same gallery. thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and teach people maybe how to how to uh, submit their own work. Right. Uh, That'd be great. Right. Because I think you know if that's the if the goal is to really promote the virtual gallery specifically, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I can help to really you know work on engagement in that way. Yeah, a script would be too. Yes, if you um, can come yeah. up with a script for us. Yeah, that would be great. Like deadline. A lot of the language has been yeah. already approved by communications here and in the press release. That if you want us to send you a copy of that too, so that's great yeah. to work from. Um, yeah. But in right. terms of accessing and all that, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't. I wasn't clear about about that. Uh, no, that's good. But good. that's what you this know conversations about. Yeah. And Brian, can I ask you a question? When you do do the the rolling pictures, will you have the kid's name that did the artwork, or will it not have people's names? Uh, that's what we'll have to figure figure out logistically. If this is, you know, if, if uh, we'll be able to do that, uh, what we can add with uh, with it. Okay. Uh, but again, I think you know, trying to basically use that as more of like a a, a teaser to then you know, draw them to going online. Okay. Yeah, and then I think, I guess the only other thing I would say is, uh, we still haven't quite figured out what our, what the end result of this is. So I think what we've talked about is, we do want to have some end, some way to bring this into the physical world, uh, whether it's uh, taking some of the artwork and displaying it somewhere, uh, or, um, or then, selecting like as the website says uh selecting a few pieces to for a permanent display 
uh, I think it would be good to before the booth, uh, before the event, to kind of figure that out so that we can then share that with the public as to what the kind of culmination of this is, mm -hmm. because this is going to end uh, at the end of the year, and it's going to then, as far as I'm understanding, then just kind of probably go away. Uh, yeah. And so uh, I think I would, what I will do with uh, Alyssa is then communicate with the city in terms of what can we, what would be the best way to, to do this. Uh, I would assume that we'd probably like to do this on city property. And so. Uh, yeah, and I mean, even just what you talked about in a last in a, another meeting about having even perhaps a screen in the lobby of City Hall. It's going to be different though as we are right. starting to change again with uh, the, the Delta variant and everything. How much we can be inside and, and mm -hmm. in the City Hall gathering yeah. again. So I think that concept was sort of as we were beginning to to hear that it would yeah. be great to do something more in the physical realm again. Mm -hmm. Now we're sort of having to potentially pull back. So, um, you know, right. it may not be that we can do very much in that way um, in terms right. of gathering or something like that yeah. you right. know, to culminate the event. But yeah, but um, I think what we're trying to do in the meantime is just complete the effort by filling it with more content, getting um, right. more community engagement mm -hmm. um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, between this opportunity mm -hmm. at Fall into the Arts. Maybe generating some interest. I'm seeing, you know, Dick Crockett from Edina Community Foundation just, I think, read this and submitted a poem to the virtual gallery. Um, I think that, um, you know, we're, which is very nice. Um, and then um, I think that uh, we um, we could also, um, you know, hopefully we're going to see. We still have tomorrow is the last concert at the Nolan Mains Fuel Investors Edina Liquor Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, performances on the plaza series that happens all summer uh, will, will end tomorrow and has had a huge response. And while um, Brian is, is still working on, Brian actually, we should really thank Brian has helped uh, film some of the performers with their permission. Uh, there's a the sort of follow through on the performer side of submitting the video that he created um, to the virtual gallery. So we're hoping we see a, a stream of some of these fabulous, yeah. extremely diverse performances uploaded to the virtual gallery to be uh, to be enjoyed as well. But I will say that the virtual gallery has been um, highly promoted. Um, you know, I think that um, there's awareness around it. It's simply, I think we've got a lot of Zoom fatigue and virtual fatigue out there. And you know, I love, I still love the idea of trying to do something in person. But um, we'll have to see if. If it's yeah. to do so, what we were allowed to do. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think the, the main objective is because uh, we inherited this project. I think there was not a clear, uh, a clear ending. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, I'm trying to figure out whatever it is. I think it just needs to be very specific yeah, because yeah, I think clear. that uh, we need, because otherwise it feels uh, like there was not a plan. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, okay. Well, we can, yes, Susan. Just had another thought. We put together packets for the artists with instruction, load in, load out, all sorts of things. What would you think about reducing this to about a half sheet so that the artists who are from in various places around the country just have that information in their packet? That's a great idea. Because otherwise, I mean, the artists are, are some Edina people, but certainly not all. Not even the majority. So mm -hmm. it's just another way to get at artists, right? Very specifically. Mm -hmm. Last year we did a promotion for Blick Art Supplies as yeah. part of their sponsorship. So we certainly could do something like that if that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great idea. I also think you know I was just at an event today where having like a plastic, you know, plexiglass stand with the QR code that people can just scan and access um, is another. A quick thing they can do when they stop by the booth, but um, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a great idea. It's something smaller and more user friendly, um, especially if it's just reducing the size of something that's already been created. So, right. Brian, that's I think great. That would be something that the city staff could work on. So yeah, if you can um, let's make a list of those things and get those out so that we yeah. can we can meet their deadlines since we're running low on time. 
Um, that would be great. And thank you, Susie, for telling us about the banner. I think if the dimensions, if we can figure out if the dimensions work for the booth, um, then that would work. So just to clarify, great. we'll work on the display and the tablet. Brian, if I can work with you on that. Yes, uh, the banner has been taken care of. We don't need to worry about the banner. You're good with you using the banner? Yeah. Oh, of course. Just clarify. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, Susan, is, Susie, is there anything as far as the activity that you need staff? Like last time we ordered the materials, are the things you want us to purchase as part of this? Or I just, since you're last yeah. before that event, so you're all here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So if we um if we do the um wishing tree, mm -hmm. the, the plastic ribbon um strips to be cut and um you know different colored, I guess the plastic paper to be purchased and then just um cut. And, and then the actual tree or um you know, maybe if we just cement a branch into, you know, a pot or something, we could do it very simply. I could probably handle that so that we have somewhere to, to hang them or tie them after is. Um, I think that would do it. What kind of cloth are you talking about? I'm a little confused. Okay, no, it's it's plastic strips. So it's like, um, if you were going to do a drop cloth, maybe for painting. Yeah. Um, so if you can visualize that, so they're just thin plastic strips and you can get them in various colors and they just need to be um, just, you know, cut down so that they're maybe, you know, I don't know, you know, what, three, four inches and, you know, maybe a little thick and then they're stretched so you can tie them on the branch, tie them on the end or uh, on to that and then they drape that way to, to be, you know, have a blossom effect. And someone and writes on it. Right, they write right yes. on it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so right. would you would you get markers then too for the writing? Do they need any special yeah, markers? Sharpies. For that? Would yeah, you write on plastic yeah. with like a sharpie? Exactly. Probably sharpies. Ink pens are fine, but then again, it depends on the drop cloth purchase. So when it was purchased, we could try it. But um, the last one that I kind of helped with, we just used ink pens and it was fine, and it didn't smear. And the, we had the multicolor, the pastel plastic sheets. I don't know where they came from, but I imagine um, maybe maybe even a Home Depot would have something like that. And then in the different sizes. So if you have a long message, you could grab a longer um, swatch or just, you know, love the small one and tie it on, that kind of thing. We did have um, people helping tie them on for younger people or people that wanted us to tie them or else people were welcome to just tie them wherever they wanted themselves. Okay. So. I guess that would be up to us too, how we wanted to handle that. Okay. I mean, it, would it be, would it make sense for Susie to purchase these things and then get reimbursed or um, um, since you've made this before? I guess one logistical piece is there's a lot of foot traffic that occurs. Yeah. So, you know, if you're talking 20,000 people over a weekend, 10,000 a day, how many of these can you accommodate? Where would they go? Would this cause congestion, right? So, our, our first and foremost, we want to make sure the festival itself occurs smoothly. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, as far as an activity, mm -hmm. are they, you know, you're thinking this would occur there mm -hmm. and be written on there and then displayed there because I think you're going to run out of branches quickly for, for doing that. So, I'm just, okay. as far as the logistics of pulling this off with with that many people mm -hmm. at the event, I, there's a little bit of a concern there. So. Why don't you come and talk to me about that and we'll, we'll yeah. take a look at whether yeah. that's space. Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe this you could also use side the booth. Yeah, if you could put it on the side of the yeah. booth. So and, be, and let me check that space and see yeah. what we got. And if, if it needs to be, you know, if it, it doesn't work out and it's just simply information about the virtual mm -hmm. gallery and we have a presence for that, then mm -hmm. with a little dish of candy or something. Then, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if there's so things that you need, it's, it's always easier if we purchase it, it just yeah, yeah, moves okay. the whole reimbursement yeah, process. Yeah, okay. But as far as like yeah. cutting cloth, I don't know right. if we have staff for that. Right, no, uh, of course. Like we'd, but, have to, we'd have to do but, it. We can yeah. do that. I'll, yeah. I can help. But just, okay. the, yeah. I'll help you, Susie, with that. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I, I'd be happy to do it. The other thing is like a clothesline where you just do string. Yeah. You know, and, and um, so it doesn't have to be a branch. It's That's just, you know, what. That's just the image, but you could have string like a clothesline too that would filter down. So you know we can ponder that, but um, yeah. just just a thought. Okay. 
And yeah, if there's stuff that you need us to order, let us know. Okay, later than later. try to figure that out ASAP. Get it shifted. Um, and then as far as the hours and finding volunteers, is that something I can talk to you about and then send that out to, you could send out an email to everyone here are the available, you know, time slots um, yeah, for our, our commissioners, not for your staff. Right? Yeah. Um, or should just the initiative one team head that up? <laughs> I'm trying you know? to think of how the best. Because we've got enough people here. Serial communication avoidance method to do that. Let me think yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they can just do the leads on initiative well, one. People it's just. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. Yeah. But, but also, I, you know, you uh, you analyzed some important technical glitches yeah. that needed to yeah. be addressed, and you certainly Absolutely. really uh, right. brought to our attention things that could have been better, and that's right. where it's we, valuable. we, you know, it's yeah. valuable going forward. Yeah. So we may have to look at virtual, right. more virtual stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, learned a lot. And yeah. I think, you know, Thank just, you for just, all your effort, yeah. Brian. Learned a lot. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Feel good about it. Yeah. Well, we'll keep talking about that. And Russ, um, I know you've got, um, you put that terrific report together and I wonder if you have anything. And I just updated a little bit for our conversation. I don't know what the next step is then for it. There needs to be a staff report created as well, associated with, um, yeah. with, the, with the draft. I mean, from last month's minutes, it was. This was a study and report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if we've got that, if it, and I think it needed to be voted on for last month's conversation, and then the, we would attach some sort of, I didn't know what that was, a staff report. Yeah. So true, so when this goes to the city council, it's kind of like a, a correspondence uh, memo from the commission. Like, here's kind of our study and report. Yeah. Here's our findings. And then there's a, a parallel one from staff saying, okay. This makes sense. We have concerns. We have advocacy. We have et cetera. They kind of run. Do we need to pass this first before that's written, or does it need to be done in tandem? Uh, I, I don't know. We would write ours at the conclusion of yours. Okay. Yep. Um, and I think, I think we, that's how. I think we right. said last month that a vote would be taken by the commission that this was the. Yeah. So the feedback yeah. was that I didn't do it on a very timely basis. Put in some of the, you know, how to how to the background information. Yeah. Who do we who did we meet with? Where what did we yeah. pick and brains your, from? And your target completion was December. So yeah, so you're still good. You're still good. Still got money and time. Then. One one thing I want to bring up is a just a quick example for initiative three. Um, and just seeing this in action, um, sort of not wasn't exactly what we set out to do, but in promoting the virtual gallery at this by creating essentially a concert series with Gill investors um, at 50th in France, we brought cultural content to a sure. developer who has greatly benefited with media Absolutely. exposure, has literally just been singing the praises of this collaboration of bringing cultural content to his property and using a plaza that he put in place for um, the community of Edina um, and and bringing it to life um, after you know we had to see the closure of the Edina Art Fair um, was just a gift to the community. Something I know the city was proud to be a part of, and that that the developer was thrilled um, to to share and promote and and uh, it's just one example of of a great partnership. Um, with a developer and combining public art with a commercial project. So I think we already have a success story seeing this in motion and another reason why we should continue to push for this kind of um, incentive for um, businesses to um, to incorporate uh, public art. And so, um, you know, whether we end up with some kind of a, a policy or if it's just a strong point of view with a follow up, um, you know, this is a really important initiative and I'm very excited that um, Russ has taken it to the next level. And, and I would add, I probably did something not, not following all the rules. I had to present to the planning commission a month ago a request for variance of something we're trying to do at our property. And afterward, I stopped, we, we talked to some of them and I said, listen, you guys do not have a process in place and your city staff does to add art and culture to developments going on in the city for our past discussion. And they said, well, that's a great idea. We should, you know, be concerning that. So I don't know, you know, we're, we're not, we, we, we're not, in, there's no initiative to go and do that in front of the planning commission. So I don't know what the process is for us to continue to push that consideration to, to the city, city staff. I don't, I don't know how that gets acted on because that's, that's part, of, part of what we're dealing with here as a staff i would recommend that be part of your study and report because that would go back to the city hall yeah, yeah well. that would be the strongest okay that's so there's a process for typical not general planning that meets yeah land use cool okay okay so we'll keep plugging we'll very good that. 
Um, okay, and initiative four, I don't know if we um, have any updates. Just okay, great. Update. We uh, spoke with the consultant actually this afternoon. She was in, in town last week, so we've got a, a couple more things that she requested of us, but she's uh, pulled together our uh, past history and financials, our registrations and attendance and class sizes. She's pulled together our um, equipment evaluation of that. Uh, she's still scheduling a few more uh, interviews on um, light type facilities uh, to kind of get a better handle of our market competition, I guess you could say, or market presence of what that would be in there. Uh, She's hoping we can get the, the three members, which are great. Right. Is it Kathy now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Chandler, Susan Chandler, Steve, and Laura. Oh, that's terrific. Uh, yeah. Together, yeah. we said after after Labor Day, but we've got Fall into the Arts, the 11th, 12th, so I just after that. Okay. Perfect. Terrific. So that'll be our initial. Uh, so, for, so for Commissioner Anna, that'll be her first one. and. Commissioner Westland, I think your first one, but for Steve and Susan, second. So Brian was at the first one. Mm. And, so. and I know um, that uh, Kathy, you were brought up to speed, right. Right. which is terrific. So uh, some of the commissioners on initiative four have spent some time oh, with good. you. They did. So they really got me up to speed. Yeah, yeah, I feel right. really good about okay. it. I'm ready to great. About it. Terrific. Which is uh, terrific. And, and just on that note, too, yeah. if you're going to have a presence at the Fall of the Arts Festival, we'll get you some also talking points on the Arts Center itself and its process. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be because great. That will come on. Mm. That will happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very sure. good. And, you know, Gary, I just wanted to talk about that. I noticed in the Arts Directory, which I really think you guys did a good job on, the Arts Center does have some classes being given there. So help me understand how we have some, Not but we're probably. also talking about it not. So there are no pottery classes. No pottery. But but we're, we're but the rest of the in upstairs certain areas is fine. We're using the main floor, right? Um, because that has accessibility. Right. And without using pottery, we have less concerns about electrical, HVAC, and uh, utility overload. Yep. Yeah, because seven classes, that was nice to see that we're actually utilizing it still. I was happy to see that. And that may happen for the foreseeable future, right? Sure. <laughs> Happy to give you a tour of the rest of the building. But, uh, <laughs> it's 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 a necessity, right? It's uh, it's a location that we just don't have other spaces to program, yep. right? Uh, yeah. We don't have that vast building that we can store equipment that's centrally located. That if you need to move out easels, if you need to move out okay. equipment, you know, we tried a little bit of that. It was a challenge to move to various different remote locations. Yeah. But, um, it's part of the nature. Well, I was glad to see it's there. And I was glad to see that, you know, we have art in the schools too. And I assume that's because of us. In that direction? Yes. Yeah. Not in school. Right. Right. Yeah. Classes. What? No. We have youth art classes. In, yeah, after school. Is yeah. that after something? School after school. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. something yes. we yes. manage. That's what so I yeah. heard. Yeah. yeah. We have some adult classes still at the senior center, but we I, have I saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it was really good. Okay, great. Um, terrific. If there's no further discussion right now, I don't know if Laura, if you or Susie have anything, or Laura, sorry, for initiative four, if there's anything further you want to mention about the Art Center. Otherwise, we'll move on to the 2022 um, 6B agenda item. Um, I think, um, you know, one of the things um, Director Vetter is going to help us go through our list of everyone should have seen. We have this terrific list of all the brainstorming that happened in the last meeting and the June meeting. Kind of compiled here is a little menu of ideas. Um, one of the themes that I've heard emerge from initiative one is taking the from struggling to healing to healing into 2022 as a theme. And I actually kind of like the way Edina Magazine took our, our virtual gallery and called it healing through art. And I think that that could potentially be a terrific theme for 2022. Um, Looking at some of the, the threads that go through um, the ideas that have been uh, percolating. Uh, reminder that this is still we haven't voted on any going forward with anything yet, but um, that would be great at this time to sort of talk about what's on the table, um, getting greater clarity on some of the ideas that have already been shared and some uh, one or two new ones that have cropped up um, since we all last met. Um, 
so I think, I don't know, Perry, do you want to talk us through um, this next discussion and then we can jump in? Yeah, just to set the table, um, October, I don't know the exact date, uh, Eric Sorensen will be presenting your work plan to the city council. That evening, all the chairs of all commissions will be presenting. So, um, so if that occurs at that point, then the council deliberates and evaluates on, on that. Um, so tonight, we really would like a strong recommendation on what you feel your initiatives are for that, so we could get those submitted and into the packet for that day. Um, so it would be great if not only you had the initiatives, but some of those initiative types, right? Is this a project, an event, is this ongoing? You know, is this a study and report, or is this a you know a review and recommend? Like what what you know kind of start really formalizing that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think the 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 trick is is it quantity over quality. You know, how many initiatives do you feel you can accomplish of what type um, is is going to be very important as you move forward. Well, uh, I also kind of indicated that, um, and I did not put this in your packet. But I wanted to give you just a, a reminder on the public art fund um, financial statement um, for that. So we did this once before, but just as a reminder, the end of the fiscal year, December 31st, 2020. So that's when we closed out the 2020 books. Six. Uh, what's that? No, go ahead. Um, uh, so the, the public art fund balance was $68,895. Oh. For 2021, there's still, remember, this is always that, will this occur in the future because of the county principles? Right. Uh, general property tax uh, revenue came into the fund of $20,000. Now, in 2021, you have um, uh, already allocated $3,000 towards the marketing of the virtual gallery. Again, that's just an encumbered amount. So I don't know expenses to date, but you've encumbered up to three thousand. You've encumbered another eleven thousand five hundred dollars for the IME Dyna piece. Um, we've also encumbered ten thousand dollars for public art repair. So uh, and just a, just an update on that. Susan mm -hmm. and uh, former manager of Centennial Lakes, Tom Shirley, did some work on uh, art going forward about. When we do receive submissions and what it should be made out of recommendations, if oh, it's going to good, be permanent. Mm -hmm. And if it's not going to be made out of those things and it's a temporary installment, mm -hmm. uh, what what would we consider as temporary? When do we say it's no longer viable to leave out in the elements, et cetera? Right. Uh, since then, we've also um, kind of came up with a, a practice now where any of the locations where public art is located, the underlying supervision will be responsible for that maintenance. So, for an example, if the art is at Centennial Lakes, Centennial Lakes will be responsible for that maintenance with the repairs of the public art fund. If it's, say, uh, Humpty Dumpty, which needs to be repainted over at Grandview Square, that will now be the responsibility of our park maintenance staff. But the underlying goal is to use these funds appropriately for maintenance and get the artists to come back to do that whenever possible. So we don't have our staff going to Jerry's Hardware to get a couple of cans of Krylon and mm -hmm. try to paint something or anything like that. Got a new arm. <laughs> uh, yeah, or fill something with spray foam. So we want to make the repairs with they? the underlying supervisor on the oh, location. Oh, I didn't hear that. The Coach Willard, uh, Willard Eichelah statue yeah. would be the responsibility extra. And yep. so, but they could take money out of this fund to repair the Willard. Willard. Yes. The city has now accepted that donation and all the future responsibility of it. For the future. Yep. That's great. And is there any process by which they have to get approval to spend that money? Um, through our normal purchasing policy. Okay. So, I mean, because yeah. they could go through that. Well, it's up to us. We've encumbered ten thousand. Okay, we ten thousand. Okay. We've come back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we'll All right. Another ten and make you aware of. Okay. The okay. Yep. Perfect. So they'll be so done. So I'm going to write a check tomorrow for sixty-eight thousand dollars okay. for an artist to, to fix it. Okay. Um, so that leaves. Um, now this does not include any other investment income or donations, as you know, that does come in through utility bills, through general donations, etc. 
that gives you an anticipated fund balance to start 2022 of $64,395. Wow. 64. That's a good start. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Again, I'll just caution you that that future property tax donation is always uh, right. suspect. I don't know if it's suspect, but, but um, I guarantee. unknown, not guaranteed. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Good update. Thank okay. you. So with that, you know, we did list some of your idea generation from the last meeting in the in the in the packet for you. And that's all I think staff has at this point. Um, you know, I think um, there are a couple of ideas that I think it would be great to just get greater understanding and clarity. One of one of the things, and I, I've got Brian here, unfortunately, um, Melissa can't be with us tonight to present something that she just came up with. Um, but I heard in the discussion an interest in collaborating. Um, again, this idea of carrying over the theme of healing um, from, you know, just a, a sort of jumping off point from what we accomplished through 2021 um, and working again with um, Edina public schools and perhaps um, joining forces with the Edina Education Fund and creating a school art initiative, which is something that was discussed with uh, the 2021 Initiative one, doing an art initiative within the public schools uh, related to the virtual gallery. We, that, that wasn't able to happen. We're looking at, is that possible for 2022? Could it be that we engage with Edina uh, art departments through the education fund uh, would lead that sort of, uh, you know, that collaborative um, one of the concepts that Alyssa brainstormed, maybe Brian, you can share a little bit more about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I can like, hopefully I can represent it well. Uh, Alyssa had an idea that was uh, based off of uh, uh, other initiatives that she's seen um, in other communities is uh, using uh, the mandala as a template uh, framework for uh, people to create art and to use the mandala as the framework to to make their own art and then that would be submitted uh, to for us to display in a certain way, uh, whether that would be a virtual gallery, um, probably, you know, it'd be kind of a multiple stage. I think it was an idea that it would be submitted uh, and then it could be promoted in different ways, whether that was through Instagram or social media, uh, through a virtual gallery, but then it would culminate in some sort of a public event uh, where it could be uh, uh, displayed. Yeah. And one, one thing I want to talk about, just Brian, if I may, is that we did hear the mayor talk when we had a, a work set, joint work session with council and the mayor, um, that he wants to see um, more, you know, this idea of bringing virtual to the physical world, even if we're obviously still in this pandemic world. We've been doing a lot of thinking, and I know all of you have been doing a lot of thinking about how to do that when we still can't really have uh, indoor events and, and that kind of thing. One concept um, that I think we all keep coming back to is this idea of um, digital art and projecting projecting art onto buildings um, or sidewalks or plazas. And we're looking right now at an event that's happening with um, St. Paul, the public art um, St. Paul uh, projecting mapping happening September 24th through 25th. And, and we've learned about the capability to take Say, for example, a concept that we, if it's the Mandela concept, uh, presented in with leadership from the Adina Art Departments in the public schools, um, and a, a sort of boil it down to a simple um, art activity that's shared within all the, the schools. And each school could have a winning Mandela that could be projected onto the building um, using either an outside. Um, capability or whether we invest in uh, that kind of digital projector that could be used in the future for other events. Um, this is kind of what's going on in the art world. I'm sure we've all been seeing this happening between the Van Gogh immersive experience. Um, you know, we're seeing, uh, especially over in Europe, uh, the Stone Arch Festival, there is so much going on with projecting art onto buildings, plazas. It's a great way to do this new public art thing that we've been talking about 
without having um, to, to worry about the upkeep of sculpture in an already full sculpture garden um, and, and to try something new and different and be in front of the community. Um, the fact of bulking art. But for the purpose of the work plan, do we need to have that level of detail and specificity? Um, or does it just fit into year two? Year for year with two, a, I think. With a theme of. The theme of healing. healing. I guess we, could, we don't have to. Yeah, I, I mean. Level of detail. Right. Just because um, just, when we do, sometimes we get into a discussion of the detail rather than the concept. With yeah. The, okay. With, I just was thinking we needed to have. Something a concept know, that we distilled that, that can be shared in that October meeting that would get people excited about our 22. I think they're going to ask you, right? So it's a year two of public art, right? It looks like that, and I think that's the reality that they yeah. approve your three year plan. But I think they're going to say, What does that mean? What are you thinking? What are okay. you okay. thinking? So we you can just say digital art because we went back and forth on that last year. What level of because you know, this year was. You know, virtual gallery, right? Yeah. yeah. This is part of the, the art plan, right? So mm -hmm. if there are associate there's expenses, right? You know, we'd want to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the art working within the schools sure. yeah. and the art department and that kind of thing. But yeah, when we're talking about a digital projector and going in that direction, potentially yeah, that looking yeah. at spending money on equipment. Uh, whether it's rented or we purchase, if it's if it makes it more cost effective to have mm -hmm. this kind of technology within the city, um, that the Arts and Culture Commission can, you know, put up RFPs for other uh, future events that go along with mm -hmm. them. Yeah, the staff would also look at this then and say, how much time does that right. come from communications? Right, from right. Parks and Recreation staff, from engagement right. right. staff. Yeah. So we can find an hour right. plan. Exactly. Because if it's very vague and all of a sudden it goes from. 20 hours to 200. Right, then right. You would really like to know, like, kind of. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also, if I could just interject, I think that, uh, you know, you we mentioned about the, the murals that are currently at the Galleria, which is a, a temporary uh, display. I mean, that there's, I don't know what the technology is, but there, it's a temporary uh, wall covering that obviously will be removed. Mm -hmm. And, like, is that something that could then be implemented in city art? Um, Projects moving forward, and so you know, in in the in place of a digital uh, event, right. mm -hmm. it could be something that could be up for a month um, in decorating a city building or something. Mm -hmm. City hall. Mm -hmm. City hall. Start right here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got water towers. And I think right. you know, water, water towers. towers. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Um, to have a and I think one thing about the, the mandala, which is interesting, is that. It does. Yeah. It is a very yeah. specific yeah. framework. Yeah. Yeah. That healing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Are, right. Like healing but it gives it gives kind of a, some constraints. Yeah. With the project, so that it everybody is following kind of a template. Yeah. And I think whatever, whether it's mandala or some other something else, and having that kind of framework would be really helpful. Yeah. It just so happens yeah. that there is um, a head, one of the heads in the art department. Um, is very schooled in mandalas, and her husband is Indian, and has they together have worked in this realm. So we could have a terrific wow, advisor. Yeah, so it's cool. really appropriate, and you know, is is uh, is and she's got that's a great. network of art. You know, but the the timing on this, I mean, it could be. Oh, it just so yeah. happens that there's a great connection there. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. So, Yes. Let's give our attention to Commissioner Suko has joined us online. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Maybe not. Welcome oh, in his car. Uh, in his car. So, um, so in any event, um, this is a concept that, I, and again, you know, I don't know if it's necessary to go into the great level of detail that we're going into right now. We wanted, you know, this is a yeah. brainstorm session where I just saw, yeah, um, you know, what was I watching? Uh, anyway, Ted Lasso that uh, we never put an umbrella up for a, a brainstorm session. You know, like we should be getting excited about efforts, and we we definitely want some enthusiasm behind these. If yeah. we don't, they're not going to be very successful when we go in before the council and. Uh, and other commissions. We want our commissions. Do we want to separate that from the three year plan, or do you want to have that as part of the three year plan? Um, this the effort? Public? Yeah. Um, I, it seems like it's a part of the three year plan. It sure um, does. It yeah. fits, okay. it fits really well. That's great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, I, I have to say that um, I think that one of the things that's important to say uh, about our commission is. Just based on getting to know all of you, um, and as a new commissioner myself, I I love that we're we're policy, you know, sort of advocacy um, 
advisor, more advisory type commissioners. And we're also commissioners who are creatives and interested in doing, doing um, cultural things in the community. And so I think it is okay to be both things and to find your place on this commission, whether you see yourself in more of an advisory role or whether you wanna get your hands dirty and also put some things out in the community that people um, see as keeping arts and culture alive and well in Edina. And so, um, you know, what I'd like to see in our 2022 plan as your chair is a combination of those things. I mean, continuing to push ahead with initiative three and the good work Russ is doing, and perhaps finding more of a seat at the table with economic development and incorporating public art um, into some of the, the talk that's being done right now with TIF packages and um, development and figuring out sort of an advisory role for, for that part of um, the city work, um, or if it's, you know, again, continuing on with the art center, of course, um, that is going to still be, that's going to really ramp up. I imagine in 2022, all of these meetings you've been having will suddenly become, will become very important to have public feedback, mm -hmm. community input on um, some of the ideas that are going to be presented. Um, and that's where uh, I see many of our commissioners involved with that effort stepping up. And then I, I think it's important for us to get excited about some in, you know, sort of physical, taking the virtual into the physical world, sort of as we discussed in front of council and the mayor back in the spring. Um, so a concept again with perhaps the Ed Fund again and the Adina Public Schools. Um, we do also have on the table um, an Earth Day um, event that would be led with um, also another student group at the high school, Project Earth, and the ener a potential collaboration with the Energy Commission. Um, which would be the concept of climate change or uh, climate change awareness in the city of Edina parks with this idea of sandblasting um, into the sidewalks of the parks, um, words about climate change. And, you know, we have examples from our neighbors in St. Louis Park about what that could look like. Um, it's this very simple process of literally just paving over, it's like cementing, putting drop cement down and etching in some words that perhaps come out of, again, some sort of um, effort with the Edina High School um, climate change activists. Um, so these are sort of pictures of things that have been done in other communities and, and very, like here's a, a worker just literally imprinting uh, into the sidewalk, um, the words that then end up, you know, sort of being something you step on and read as you walk into the parks of Edina. So again, just staying in front of our community um, with poetry, staying in front of the community with, um, you know, again, I think this public art effort and the idea of, um, of having, I, I believe it's called um, mapping, digital mapping, which is again, projecting images onto um, school buildings or plazas, um, having the capability to do this. Um, you know, this could potentially, if we decide this is equipment that is cost effective, be a tool for the commission with other efforts that could come to us with proposals for things they want to put into the community for events days of remembrance. It could be for Juneteenth. It could be any number of Edina efforts um, that could have this arts and culture component. So, um, you know, I, 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 again, I like an idea of sort of sprinkling efforts throughout the year. Um, that again, keep us in front of the community. Um, as well as, as having opportunities for more of our advisory role um, going forward. So um, as far as, you know, deciding, um, Perry, on anything specific, um, do we want to, do we agree that we want to go ahead and, and go forward with an effort that would involve um, the Edina Public Schools and this Mandela concept? Um, is everyone sort of excited to try that and right. see what that looks like and take some of us take that a step further? I'll just talk to you. Wording is important. Okay. So to move forward, you also need their cooperation, right? So, uh, so drafting your initiative in mm -hmm. the sense of what you want to try to accomplish. So if you get to a point and they say, we're too busy, we're not going to do that anymore. We don't want to do that. You have something that you can actually show as a couch. So I think we're right. important when you're okay. looking at some type of um, collaboration. Okay. That's a good point though. 
Yeah. So because we may not so be you might have to stage play. it as we you know explore and mm -hmm. negotiate yeah. and define. Yeah, and yeah. And so for for the kind of process, and then activate and know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, that sounds yeah. good. So yeah. the wording on that, and then yeah. the same with the yes, because the um, energy commission uh, project Earth Group at the high school, they would very much like to go forward with us um, for an Earth Day um, event. Um, and so, so the wording, so, so presenting that again is like a, so that would be the city's environmental energy environment commission is doing the event that you. Well, that we, no, we were, with. so it was project earth that we done at high school that came to me with the concept of having an earth day, um, public art effort that would involve this, um, sort of, the, again, the sort of sidewalk poetry concept. And it just so happened that the advisor to Project Earth is a, a gentleman, Paul Thompson, in our community, who also knows the Energy Commission and mentioned it to them, and they expressed interest as well in being a part of that. So, so there's so, always a struggle with cross-commission yeah. work, but I mm -hmm. think it ties in nicely with that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a, a major Stormwater climate change project that's happening up at uh, Weber Park, Weber Woods yeah. area yeah. over yeah. the next year. So if there are things about you know doing this initiative as part of a permanent installation, I think that's a, a really good location as well. Oh, at yeah. Weber Woods. Well, if you're talking about like imprinting climate oh, change work, absolutely. They're going to have a huge change. No, I, 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 I live right do, there. Do, I do exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. But um, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. Very specific too. Very meaningful, yeah. like yeah. You know, for the people there. That whole community right. might well, be. There's, there's, you have a lot of options. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just a reminder to include our on-screen folks. Sure. Um, any feedback so far on what you've heard um, about ideas for 2022, commissioners? Commissioner Sukow, any any feedback so far or ideas you've been thinking about for 2022? Yeah, so so I apologize first of all for my tardy uh, appearance. I had a flat tire, so I meant to be there in oh, person. Oh no! Oh, that's um, terrible. Uh, Can so so, so I, I I'm talking from my car, so I apologize. Um, Thank you uh, for joining us. <laughs> and no, no, and and uh, um, I I in our last meeting we had talked yeah. about. I love <laughs> the idea of partnering with the high school and the schools more. So I, I'm very enthusiastic about your idea, Commissioner Sor or Chair Sorensen. Um, uh, anything I think that we can do that, I think that's just a great way to involve the community and what it kind of like. So I, I'm super excited about that. I had other ideas in the past, but I think as you pointed also, we can only do so much. So um, i very, very enthusiastic. Okay, that's great. And, and you know, one thing that we can also say is since we've We'll have mosaic with us. Our commissioners, student commissioners come from mosaic. I can see that this could potentially also be something that mosaic um, would get excited about too. I mean, it'd be interesting to get their feedback, but um, I mean, but I, this I, would, yeah. I mean, this last would, time I, I talked about, yeah, last time I talked about resuscitating the sculpture competition again too, because I just thought that was such a great community event, but I think this is a great way to evolve and grow um the uh, public art activity so i'm i'm super supportive okay awesome thank you Good. no i agree i think it's wonderful to involve the students and to involve to reach out to the schools i think that's terrific okay and do you like the idea of the digital um imaging on buildings as as a new concept to explore Versus the sculpture competition, maybe to just for 2022. Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think certainly to explore it, I think I think that would that would be great. It's way easier, and I suggest that you project something on that stupid sound wall at 50th and Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, That's wait, the first one you built, right? Oh, which one? Oh, yeah. Right across the street. Oh, good idea. Yeah, the big flag wall. Well, that's the thing to start looking at is, is the, the flag yeah, wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm such a good thing. Um, <laughs> and then how about you, um, Susie Johnson? Anything else that you want us to talk about or think about? I don't 
don't think so. Um, I'm on board. I, I like the suggestions as well. I I, um, I like engaging the students. Yeah, I think that's great. I'm good. Okay. All right, terrific. Um, well, good. Well, we will. So we'll um, put some language together um, about the Mandela um, when you know Alyssa's obviously ready to sort of do. I think she's taking a stab at it and then had a family emergency tonight. But um, and then we're doing our research too on um, the the actual implementation, what that might look like. So we have something mm -hmm. um, sort of more exciting to share about how that would actually come together and work. Um, you know, certainly we were seeing other um, ideas and proposals that were on the table. Um, there was interest um, in, we were approached to do um, uh, outdoor public art, a sculptural installation um, tied to more uh, Black History Month, um, which I guess at this point, um, you know, it's around $5,000, I think, and it's a, a, an effort that was done. I mean, Brian and I talked about it. it was. It was done in Minneapolis at Theodore Worth Park last year, um, and it's called um, Unweaving. And there was a, a documentary on PBS about it um, when it was done in Duluth, um, also during the pandemic. So it's it's different um, outdoor uh, installation made with yarn that uh, by an artist who's very well regarded and talks the unweaving part is unweaving our history and it goes into um you know the fabric of our culture of our, our the history of edina uh, could be something explored um it does um tie in with the work that's being done um on racial justice and equity um and there's certainly the potential to do other programming um around uh something like this so it's it's you know this is sort of a picture of it. It's it's definitely whenever it goes up, it gets a lot of attention. It, it could be potentially something in a place like Artisan Acres Park um, in the winter. Um, that's kind of when it, it sort of it's really intriguing to visit and um, explore. It's also when it was in Duluth, it was done in the summer at a park. Um, the artist you know was very excited to share her information and present to our commission as a potential um, uh, public art piece that, again, it's temporary. It would be um, over a, the course of a, a few months, um, but something to, again, just, just to put in our, the back of our minds as far as um, another way to be in front of our community with something engaging and also you know, that, that's top of mind right now in Edina and with, with some of the work that's being done in the city around uh, racial equities and justice. So, um, Tim, Chair Sorensen, um, I, just a suggestion because you've yeah. come up with so many, you, you're like an idea factory. Um, uh, yeah. um, uh, um, maybe the initiative should be some type of um, way that community members could make suggestions or referrals or recommendations for these types of activities and then marrying it with what uh, Mr. Vetters talked about, like, you know, kind of trying to marry it with resources, right? So like, you know, people could make numerous suggestions, but you know, we could see what kind of, I mean, it's just, it's just a way of, I mean, yeah, there's I, probably not no, a lot of work. But, no, I, but, I, I you know what? I really I'm so glad you're bringing that up because that was the other thing I just wanted to bring up to us. Um, since we, as commissioners, we only have so much time and and you know can only do so much um, each month, and it's it's quite a process to to get an effort through, as we learned from um, the virtual gallery. So one idea um, that other cities have done is to um, offer micro grants, so sort of promote to the community that there are these small chunks of money available for um, for ideas that relate to, and we can pick the themes that are important to the city at the time, say it's Black History Month or Days of Remembrance or Juneteenth, um, and allow for you know, some kind of um, a public process where people can submit ideas that we could then present before our commission and uh, vote on and, and you know, work. I don't know, Perry, that was something that we need to sort of find out if if we can actually um, issue micro grants. If that's something that um, has been 
I don't know if that's ever been something that the city has done with arts and culture before uh, versus all these ideas kind of being generated by this commission. Um, so anyway, just a thought I had of, of um, another way that we can sort of use our commissioners in more of an advisory role versus constantly generating ideas and then having to figure out how to make these things happen. It says staff would do that. If there is interest in that, we can track all the legalities of, of that. Okay. And is that what you're talking about, um, Commissioner Sukow? Is some if there could be some uh, kind as, of process? As, as as usual, you 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 have it much more well formed than I did. But, if, but anyway, no, I I think that's a it it just it's you know bottom up. And I I guess I would encourage my fellow commissioners from the public art perspective. Don't they think that that would somehow marry up to that too? Like it's it's this bottom up generation of ideas and support mm -hmm. for it as opposed to the top down direction. So um, yeah, um, I'm gonna yeah. Go, I'm gonna go back on mute. I I think it's a fabulous idea. Uh, better, Mr. Better, I, I would definitely explore it. Okay, mm -hmm. we all like that idea of exploring the idea of, of having a, a maybe a, a micro grant process. Yeah, yeah with, with cool. the idea of yeah, being the community with... involvement, I think yes. that's got to be the key to it, mm -hmm. not necessarily just with a theme, because you had kind of had a theme when you were talking about it. Right. But with the whatever. Healing, yeah. yeah. It should just be what the community really wants. Mm -hmm. What they come forward with. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's not far off of when you did student calls for student, but right? mm -hmm. because those were I should remember correct me if I'm wrong, those are kind of temporary in nature. Mm -hmm. Pseudo kind of, you know, we didn't really think through it. Yeah, I, I would, but it, I was, it, I was, it's it's part of the legalities of public purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not far from that. And then that would that would again then take the onus off of us, and it would be the organization that would then go off and and create the effort, and it would be the Arts and Culture Commission funded it, but we wouldn't have the responsibility, nor would staff, of seeing it implemented and out into the world. We went we might take this one effort, for example, and guide that through the process with the support of the city staff, but otherwise with the Adani Public Schools and, right. and the Adani Education Fund and our departments. But otherwise, I see opportunities, especially looking at our hefty budget that we should spend um, to support arts efforts that come through the community. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I'm glad there's support. Could that be a standalone initiative then, you think? I think that's a standalone yeah, initiative. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that would be a new initiative. Um, uh, I would, you know, regarding other initiatives for next year, I, I would like to keep the one, initiative three alive. Yeah. And, and bring it to the kind of the next level of, of um, mm -hmm. working with the city to create procedures to work through commercial part. Yeah. And four, oh, yeah, oh, and, oh. and I said yeah. that out loud too. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I totally yeah. believe in three and four. And I think in three, I think we can find a greater role. Yeah, I'd be glad advisors. to take a shot at writing that. Okay, that'd be great. You. That yeah. would be terrific. Okay. And, and in making conversation, yeah, with with some bullet points below the, yeah. the, the initiative as well. Yeah, yeah. But I think um I think that we've already begun to advise. Um at yeah. a great example. Yeah. I can write that up for you um uh, with uh, the project that happened at 50th, um, of how this commission was of of um was of um we consulted well, with that project when you present when you present the yeah the, the, that's, right. that's, what, that's what you talk okay about. you got it <laughs> right. you got it you right. got it okay that's great well i'm i well, feel like we've got okay yes Perry. so i just want to clarify so for 2022 we'll have a continuation of current years number three current years number four the micro grants mm -hmm. for um community temporary installation mm -hmm. of idea generation of mm -hmm. some sort um, you had talked about a um, Earth Day event with Edina Public Schools energy classes and the environment energy and environment commission for the city mm -hmm. and then you had your year two of the public art plan would be to develop again wording a partnership with Edina Public Schools that included the digital imaging concept right yes By, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's good yeah that's good and so and, yeah. around that yeah mm -hmm. and you know it might sound corny but i do think that this healing concept fits nicely with the art effort with um again i love that 
Edina Magazine cover story, yeah. healing through art, um, as well as healing our planet with the climate change um, yes. piece. And both of those efforts would fall within the calendar, the academic year to involve, we've learned through this effort that we really have to have a hard stop with our students right. by um, the end of the year of May uh, 2022 would be Absolutely. certainly. So we'd be finished with our efforts by before mm -hmm. the summer. Yeah. Are you guys hearing anything from the city regard that should be informing our ideas? You know, that's that I think is, especially with the new staff that we see as kind of a, a gap in the process is, you know, you have your once a year check in with the city council. Um, and you, it's kind of a report on your progress. There isn't that connection of the city council saying, hey, here's two additional things I right. really want to focus on. Big, for big ideas we're working on to yeah. the city that. Right. So that, that does kind of feel like that gap in the process. But as Commissioner Suko said earlier, right, this is that bottoms up, right? You're bringing ideas yeah, 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 yeah. change yeah. Yeah. rather than yeah. being down. So, like I would say, your advisory to the city council, that's your role. Um, so this is your opportunity to bring those ideas up and don't be surprised when this gets edited back. Right, right. That either they add or, yeah, they have. or whatever it might be what to. Because okay. I, I like start to think about are there neighborhoods or areas that they really want to develop in a certain way? Mm -hmm. You know, so is Southdale an area and that they want to see this big thing done? And that would that would be yeah. useful. To, to I would say anecdotally, I don't know if you know, but the Chamber of Commerce is starting to view the France district as an arts corridor. Uh, I think that's um, that's again outside of the city, city as a government unit, but within Edina, the chamber does look at France as a possible future art corridor. So, with their businesses, so I think that's yeah, why I you see what's going on at the yeah. Galleria. That's Probably you mm -hmm. might see more of that. Yeah. yeah, and so, however, we can stay at the table with those the, the chamber of commerce and, and some of those future efforts. You know, mm -hmm. wherever we can continue to be present and a voice for the community um, in their planning efforts. I think you know we we I think all want to be there and be part of it. But it's, it gets a little awkward because if it's not city endorsed, and we as a, as a commission can't really work individually with these other outsider groups, but that it's not part of the initiative. Yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, part of the staff role too is to help connect that. Right? Okay. So if the chamber comes forward to the city and says, uh, we like to make this something formal, that yeah. businesses along France are gonna start doing more of this, then we'd be honest to say, hey, okay. you know what we should do? Okay. Is connect with the Arts and Culture Commission. And that would be great. For that would, yeah. That's the best way. Right? Yeah, because feedback. right now it's yeah. kind of it's very informal. Yeah, right? we've yeah. heard they're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, that's why I went up on the gallery. Yeah, because right. we think this could be an arts corridor. So I I feel, feel, I feel, I feel I feel like that policy. You know, that's and almost an initiative right there. What's that? It is. Don't you think so? That's not all those pieces. Yes. We were just talking. This is almost an initiative to pull all the pieces together so that we could. Yeah, we want to give advice and assistance to the, the bigger board. Yeah. That might be part of your number three. Well, that's what I think yeah. that's what we were yeah. wanting about. It's like, how do we get that, you know, sort yeah. of beef up number three so kind that of, we really do okay, I like get that. it kind of in a circle. Even, even for example, when we see whatever's going to happen over here at this Perkins site, you know, wouldn't it be great if, if the developer knew sure. be in contact with the Arts and Culture Commission? Yeah. Sure. And we could be, you know, a sounding board for them and perhaps you even yeah. more talk, yeah, we, you know, like this. Yeah. yeah. We talk to the neighborhood. We find out what the neighborhood's interested in. Right. We tell them, you know what? You put in a green space for a farmer's market, you're going to win some points right. with the neighborhood. Right. You know, in that kind of role, I can see this commission really being of use yeah. to, to the economic development team and um, and some of some of the planning that's going on. We really have to be light on our feet, though, to be able to respond to something like that, right? Probably. But I, maybe the big ones. I would always caution you to not position yourself between the neighborhood and a developer. Yep. But I think as an advisor, <laughs> you're right. absolutely right, Karen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's yeah. always room for more input, but I would caution you. Yes. Yeah. So how do we want to write all these initiatives? I mean, that's our responsibility is to write them. Carefully. So it's going to write each one. We'll, I'll work with. So why don't I work with Brian and Alyssa on um, the public school art initiative? 
Um, I can also write up the um, proposed idea with the um, student environmental group and the energy commission, um, and then the micro grant. Okay, I'll do the continuation of three. Who can do the continuation of four? I can do that. Oh, Stephen. Okay. And, oh, and maybe Stephen, I heard somebody else. We don't show Stephen my the micro grant idea, Stephen. If you can, if you can uh, weigh in on that too, and just look at the language and see if you tweak it in any way. Um, I'd be happy to. I, I I I do think we should incorporate a little bit of what Perry was saying though too about like also I like a, the idea of you know, like you could get access to city resources within reason, right? So it should be not just a grant, but also like how you could get into the park department, you know, work plan or something like that, or you know, work stream. So and not and not crush the company or, not or, crush right, the, or have access to communications so you get a press release about the effort or something like that. Yeah. 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 So that would be that we need feedback from the city. So part, I, I think the initiative would be partly like just creating this mechanism and maybe doing something, but like really it's about creating the mechanism, right? Can you take a stab at that, Steve? Sure, like, yeah, sure. I like your thoughts yeah, on that. Um, okay, that would be awesome, thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, All right, I, okay, I, I think that's the, we love a motion on that. Okay. Um, Can we get that's a lot to yeah. digest, but I think you've got a comfort level on your assignments. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. at least you could maybe make a motion to move forward with the drafting of these initiatives okay. for 2022 and okay. wordsmith and then present to the city council in October. Okay. 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 So, so we bring all this back. I'll bring it back meeting. once in the September meeting, all of us that are wordsmithing. We're, and well, then... we're gonna have to have the packet done by probably your September meeting. Right. Oh, okay. it's over. So um, you could do one last review in September, but it'd be great. At yeah. least you could get a motion to right. support the okay. five okay. initiatives. All right. I, I move that we accept the general initiatives as discussed and with the wording of the initiatives to be created by those individuals we've identified. Okay. I second. <laughs> we need to take a roll on that. Okay. I, I need to. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Rubin. Aye. Commissioner Sorensen. Aye. Commissioner Stemmel. Aye. Commissioner Suko. Aye. Commissioner Westland. Aye. Okay. okay, terrific. Thank you so much. Um, Be could we share? I hate to interrupt. Can we take just one quick thing out of order then? Yeah. Uh, if Commissioner Rubin has to leave, I wanted to cover the upcoming meetings and events. Yes. And sure. Just to let, let the commissioners know that this is the last hybrid meeting that we can legally host due to the expiration of the executive order. So, beginning in September, we will be all in person meetings. Therefore, um, we are going to move meetings to the Edina Public Works facility. We will be in the multi-purpose room. Oh, that back room? Yep, the back room. Um, so that's down at 7450 Metro Boulevard. We'll put this in your packet for next time. Um, but we'll have adequate space to spread out at that point. So just, um, it'll be a bigger room to accommodate more of us, et cetera. So uh, I just want to draw your attention to that. And that, um, as a reminder, Sister Susan will cover it, but the Fall and Arts Festival, September 11th and 12th. And you will be receiving an invitation to the uh, dedication event for Agancy Park. Mm -hmm. um, the renaming of that, that will be October 4th at 4.30 p.m. It's a Monday. So that will also be included in next month's package. Okay. Just a quick reminder about the location sure. before you take off. How about the hiring? We have. We'll get to that in the info items. Okay. But well, what's next? I won't, I won't um, that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. The next thing, I, I for chair comments, I, I tapped out. I think we've covered everything I wanted to talk about. So, um, trying to think if there was anything left in chair comments. Uh, uh, no. Cool. Um, just I, the question I had was when our, our mosaic students join us in the city council. Okay. Students apply and student and city council approves them. Correct. Yep. City council interviews and 
uh, who's the okay. So as long as we don't have that word limiting it, that's great. Yeah. Okay, great. I don't have anything. So um, any member comments at this point? Does anyone on the commission have anything they want to share or say uh, left to discuss? Okay. Um, hearing none, I guess we'll go on to item number eight, um, staff comments. Uh, yeah, so just quick informational item. Trace will cover the, the details, but as you know, uh, Susan has gone part time and she's going to right off into the sunset here after the Fall of the Arts Festival. So we did uh, recruit for a, uh, a recreation program supervisor to delve into the arts. There's still a lot of unknowns on where we head with the uh, center and facility. So uh, Susan's been wearing a, a couple of hats for a for a long time now because we've got some some vacant FTEs there. But I don't know, if Tracy, you want to talk about the process we went through and then the appointment we're doing? Sure. Yeah, we went through um, a whole process of um, interviewing for the recreation supervisor in the arts and with an arts and culture emphasis. Uh, and there was a panel that selected um, three interviews um, with the with the candidates. Um, we selected Laura Fulton, who's currently the assistant general manager at Centennial Lake. So Laura has worked for the city for 15 years, and she'll be starting that role October 11th. And so the plan is that Laura will try and um, continue on with what Susan and, and Jeanette have, have put into our activities directory for fall and winter. But also this is a time for, for um, Laura and the recreation staff to kind of try and experiment with some um decentralized programming and that's using our parks and maybe the schools and our other recreation facilities to see what kind of programming we can continue kind of during this interim time without a without a home mm -hmm. per se we'll still utilize the main floor of the um art center but we'll try to look at some other things and um kind of at the council's directive see if we can do some more programming um with youth and some more inclusion maybe doing some more pop-up type events and and just making sure that we're continuing to keep um, art and that emphasis out into the community as we again try to figure out where we want to be with a, an actual home moving forward. So, so we're excited to have Laura do that and she's excited to start. So um, I'm guessing probably at our October meeting, Laura will be here. What is her background in art? Um, she's got um, more, of a, more of a programming background in a facility background, um, but I, I think the the intent was to hire somebody that could. Um, she has that experience, and I think she has that those contacts. And she again, having worked in a diner, she's formed a lot of these a lot of these um, partnerships. And I think it's, it's a little bit of a different way of looking at how we're going to provide art to the community, at least in this interim time. And um, while we will still have kind of that fine art with the drawing and the painting, kind of looking at that. Um, more general introductory type programming that maybe we can get um, kind of an, expand our demographic of who, who we're serving um, so that when we are ready to maybe move to a, a pottery space or or we continue in this decentralized for that, we have kind of those those relationships and those connections because, um, you know, the art center has been closed for, you know, it'll be two years so um, mm -hmm. to try to bring back start some of beginning. some of those um, some of those current students and there's a there's a strong following and a strong allegiance um, many of those folks like the senior center um, and they like that location so we can continue to utilize that so I think Laura's background will be um, you know just kind of being a little bit more creative and looking at, at things a little bit differently than how we have currently um, utilizing the art because we won't have that as well. Sure. Good. For that update. Um, anything else fall into the arts or anything that we... Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, but really quickly, we are in such great shape. We have 195 artists and some wow. of them are just exquisite. Some of them are repeats. Some of them are new. They are all placed in booths. Most of them are pretty happy. We have some most of the 16 food vendors. We have 20 odd um, sponsors at the gold, silver, and bronze levels, which are 2500, 1250, and 650. I'm sorry, yes, yeah, 650 levels uh, that will be in places around. We have 
your booth now solidifying. We have the crime prevention fund booth solidifying. So I I just think we're at the detailed point of printing name tags and stuffing artist packets. So congratulations to, to get all those people in places. So I think I, just if we get great weather, it's going to be wonderful. Oh, okay. and it happens That's rain or shine. Right, it happens yeah. rain or shine, but it's better in shine. Yes. <laughs> okay. Susan, what are you anticipating will make on this event? What I'm sorry. What What are you anticipating that will make on this event? Um, Russ. What happens is this is a um, a benefit. Thanks, Russ. Bye bye. For the Edina Crime Prevention Fund. Also. Great. And so the the income generated from uh, the artists, which is right now about sixty six. Um, yeah. And the and the sponsors and so on goes directly to the Atlanta Crime Fund. They allocate the majority of that back to the city, except for operational expenses, primarily to the police department, um, and then in the past to the art center and to Centennial Lakes for the work that we do on it. Um, I should also say we are including uh, medics and um, the fire department, and so it's more of a first responder thing than just the police at this time. Thank you so much. Another reason to donate around ten thousand dollars. When all is said and done, to the art center, uh, a little bit 13. can be up to thirteen. The Teeny. department has gotten. It's usually a quarter, quarter, half. Of so about ten to thirteen. Okay. Each of the two facilities. This so. is a, this is obviously not a money maker, but a great service to these artists. Um, well, it does are, really support the police department. Yeah. 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 They are it's, able. If you think about the things that police departments have, and I sit on that executive committee as well, but if you think about the new drones that they have, new motorcycles that they have, new flag crafts and so on, a lot of this is in part supported by the crime funds efforts. And they do they do other fundraisers during the year. The city certainly supports this, but the crime fund really has they they, they offer rewards when they are looking for someone. So they have they have a real commitment to safety and security in the city. Okay. Excellent. So we're happy to help out with that. And it's a great event to be there. Oh, for sure. So it's a very different thing than say the uh, um Edina Art Fair, yeah. which is a fundraiser for the 50th and France organization. So very different kind of thing, but a wonderful, a wonderful house. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much for the update and uh, another great reason to volunteer with the virtual gallery booth. So you can go in and check out all these fantastic artists. Yes. Um, exciting and wonderful. Thank you for doing that for our community. Um, and so I think at this point, I, we've, we've now covered upcoming meetings and events we've already covered. Um, so at this point, we can get to item number nine, which is adjourning our meeting. I want to thank everyone for your participation. Congratulations, all of you hybrid virtual people for kind of making it through. Mm -hmm. um, you look fantastic and it worked and I'm impressed. I couldn't get it to work in Massachusetts, but um, you did it. And so well done. And for everyone who's here today, um, and we're sorry for those who couldn't join us, but I think um, some is so uh, anyway, we'll, we'll hopefully just keep moving ahead and we've all got marching orders. Um, so I'd like to take a motion to adjourn the August 22nd meeting at, uh, we're a little late here, 6.35, uh, is it? Um, PM, can I get a motion? 6.31 on our recording. 6.31, okay, great. So moved. Okay, thank you so much. And then um, can I get a second? Second. All right, perfect, thank you so much. Um, Harry, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Amla. Yes. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Sorensen. Yes. Commissioner Stemler. Yes. Commissioner Suko. Aye. And Commissioner Wessler. Aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Susan will shut that all up. Ready?